Okay, so what goes on is there's that. And um, what happens is uh, this is where I will now go into Ringo a little bit for you, Adam, in the sense that what happened with the Beatles early on, okay, uh, is the fact is that um, what they had what is colloquially known as the Liverpool Jangle. And it's when you see them play live that you really get a gist for it, you know, that kind of thing. There was that doco a few years ago called Eight Days a Week that was on, and then they had the, um, uh, the concert afterwards uh, at um, Shea Stadium, which in the day was the biggest concert, you know, broke all the records and all that. And that was when I went, oh, look at what he's doing there. It's a four on the floor and all that. And it, it was just brilliant. Ringo stole the show at that concert. And what it is is when you take things like, she loves you, yeah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. What you're hearing is when I say a Liverpool jangle, of course, as everyone knows, the Beatles came from Liverpool. And the, the history of the Beatles, this is the thing that everyone should, I hope, would remember as far as their history. But before they really hit it big, they uh, spent six months playing in what was essentially a strip club for sailors in Hamburg in Germany. And they did like 11 sets or whatever it was a day, you know, three quarters of an hour, 15 minutes off, you know, all this sort of business. For the sailors, they only had a few hours and basically they were in this Hamburg club. And when you do things like that, you get good. You get good. So they went away. They were playing the Cabin Club and all that stuff with uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers and Johnny Kidd and the Pirates, I think, and all, you know, just early 60s, you know, sort of thing. 60, 61, 62. But then they went away to Hamburg and then they came back and they were ah, that much better from all that work they did. And what happened is one of the things that they developed was Ringo had this uh, wonderful clipped shuffle sort of thing. So here's a shuffle. And it's like that. You could see it on that doco on, at Shea Stadium. It's like it's like, ah, it's tight. But you know what? George Harrison was playing straight, you see. So you had almost like the Hemiula from Espanola, you know, sort of thing. My old joke, the old jokes, many of you know them already. Hemiula, what the hell's a Hemiola? Sounds like something you need a cream for. So what goes on with that? Oh, it's tired now. I've got to change that joke. Anyway. <laughs> But George Harrison is playing straight. Like that sort of stuff. So what happens is you had this jangle between the two. Um, there's two that I listen to just to, you know, just to, I mean, I've got them everywhere, but um, I mean, I've been listening to them since I was a kid. My nanny, um, Carol, used to sing uh, She Loves You when I was a little bub at the pub and all that. So even at Kinder, when the Beatles came out in 64, we're all singing it in the playground and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yoinks and away. <laughs> so, but it was, you know, so there you go. But what happened was you had this jangle about it, right? And the other one, so I, I, I double checked and I'm going, that's what they're doing. Yep, no worries. It's almost like Ehimiola where Ringo is playing a shuffle based on three right, but it's a bit clipped, and then George Harrison was playing straight rhythm, or it might have been John, or whatever, but when you're dealing with the, the other song that I wanted to bring up was Help, There's a, it's a tight shuffle again, but every time Ringo goes, <laughs> it's a straight eight kind of build, you see, so you're jockeying between triplets and quavers, you see, and what happens also is that when you're dealing with certain kinds of, say, jazz, but um, bang, See how that's... But I could clip it. See, it's changed the tone, you see? on you see so what happens then is you've got um, time inside time 
you see. Because you can deal with the time signatures, whether it's uh, cut time or normal common time, when we're going back to, say, uh, Megadeth, uh, all that. Um, but then you can have what's inside, what's inside that time. How are you going to approach um, beat one to beat two? And this goes back to something that I loved um, from Leonard Bernstein, the classical composer, um, when I was coming up and doing all my orchestration studies back in the day. And there was this beautiful program on Channel 2, um, you know, Art Sunday, you know, that kind of thing. And they had this doco on Leonard Bernstein. He was brilliant. I loved that Leonard Bernstein. West Side Story. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. Marcus, remember last year? <laughs> and there's Alice Cooper for you, Andrew. He did a cover of this. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first cigarette to your last dying day. Get in that Tirana with the four on the floor. <laughs> I'm doing this sober. Anyway, so what's going on is that even with that, Leonard Bernstein said, well, you can have one note. That's one note. But as soon as you go to the second note, that's when the magic happens, you know, that kind of thing. So I could do this. What does that mean, you see? But if I go... There's your kaboom. Now it means something. Probably means something silly. get really loosey-goosey with everything and start to get a really cool one. So there's something about everything there. Adam, I'm talking about that with She Loves You and all that. How did I go fr from Beatles, Ringo, and She Loves You, yeah, 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 to Where's the Kaboom and Doof? There you go. So what happens is then you can actually quantize inside each beat, you see. Listen, Shazza, stop bogarting the bloody primo chop chop. Oh, Daz, you bastard, you love that bloody Tirana more than me. Why don't you get out in the backyard and build that bloody pagola you've been bloody promising me for years? The bloody pagola! 